سلام الله عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his entire household all his companions may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless them all and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us, grant us goodness in this beautiful month of Ramadan. May Allah accept from us the fasting that we are engaging in as well as the standing at night in the voluntary prayer known as Taraweeh. It is indeed to be standing in the midst of thousands of people with such a melodious recitation wherein the time is not looked at because it is in contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is indeed something unique. And I find that every time there is a recitation that is correct, it actually is hair raising. And it actually affects the soul before anything else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true impact of this Quran. Amin. My brothers and sisters, yesterday we spoke about how important it is to save ourselves from falsely accusing others of committing adultery and fornication, from spreading rumor about others, that which is false about them, because not only would we take the sin of what we have engaged in, but there is a chance that we will also be taking some of the other sins that the person may have committed in his or her life. And where do we get this from? None other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Do you know who is a bankrupt person? Atadruna manil muflis. Do you know who is bankrupt? The Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to know a bankrupt person just like we would know. One who doesn't have cash, no savings, not at all. So one who doesn't have gold and silver. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that is not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to he or she who comes on the day of judgment with a heap full of good deeds, a lot of good deeds. They have their salah, they have their zakah, they may have many other good deeds, their recitation of the Quran, their voluntary prayers, etc. But as they come on the day of judgment, they have backbitten this one, they have slandered that one, they have eaten the wealth of this one, and they have wronged that one, usurped something from this one. So, their good deeds are actually given to those people, subhanallah. Initially, the bad deeds of those people come to this particular person. And the good deeds of this particular person go to that person. Imagine, you come with a whole pile of cash, and that cash is given to those you owe the wealth to. And once it is depleted, you collect their debts until you are a person who's totally bankrupt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from this. This evening, we'd like to look at those who accuse their wives of immorality. And they don't have witness to bear that particular witness. They have no witnesses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is extremely dangerous. You don't just accuse your spouse of something. However, remember my brothers and sisters, if someone makes an accusation based on what their eyes have seen, because they no longer want to live with that spouse, then they need to bear witness through the correct channels. The idea is never to disgrace an individual, but the idea is to get the justice that is owed and deserved. So it is not good enough for us to go out and expose our spouses, though those whom we've shared a bed with, and those whom perhaps we have children with, and we go out and say the worst things about this particular person in the public. What benefit does that have? Absolutely nothing. If we don't want to live with them, there is, there's a, there is a respectable way of doing that, and that is known as talaq. It is known as divorce. Divorce is something that is very, very frowned upon, but it is permissible as a last resort. It is part of the mercy of Allah. There are some cultures that do not allow divorce. Some faiths do not allow divorce. In Islam, it is permitted as a last resort, as the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in 
Surah An-Nur, which is the 24th Surah of the Quran. And he makes mention of a very interesting fact. And that is, a person bears witness four times using the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has seen his spouse engaging in the act with another person and he swears that he is truthful and he's and then the fifth one is where he takes an oath that if I am a liar then the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon me subhanallah and thereafter the female would bear witness four times that he was a liar she did not actually do that and the fifth time she would say if I am telling false or if I am telling that which is not the truth then may the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon me or if he is being truthful may the anger be upon me this is something known as li'an we don't have the time to go into its details but it is showing us a respectful way of parting ways if you feel that there has been promiscuity or infidelity from a spouse may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our homes that having been said, my brothers and sisters, it is only correct for me to make mention of the disease that has spread like wildfire in society. The disease of doubt and suspicion. Doubt has no cure. It is like a cancer that eats into the best of relationships and you destroy the best relationship just because you're doubting, you're suspecting. That doubt and suspicion has no place in the heart of a mu'min when it comes to the dignity of another person, more so your spouse. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from doubting. People break up a beautiful relationship just because they are doubting. They are suspicious. So their character changes, their conduct changes, the way they speak to their spouse changes. That's not good enough. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. That having been said, let us not give reason to our spouses to doubt us. You know, you're sitting late at night chatting with someone and sending all these hearts and these hearts that blow up and start pumping on WhatsApp. You know what I'm talking about? And it's two in the morning and then you tell your wife, didn't you hear what the sheikh said? He said, stop doubting. But you are giving me reason to doubt you. That's the thing. You are doing something that is so foolish and you are using this as a password to get through your sin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all and grant us all the elevation in status. Amin. Then there is a very interesting thing that we need to protect ourselves from. When rumor is spreading, be careful whom you are talking about. Sometimes it could just be a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are spreading rumor about. And as a result, you may be cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I want to make mention of the story of Aisha radiallahu anha that is made mention of in Surat An-Nur. It is known as Haditha ifk the story of the great fabrication. Verse number 11 of the Surah comes with a clarification of the name of Aisha radiallahu anha. The purity, the chastity of this great lady, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha is revealed in the Quran and we read these verses to this day. Surah An-Nur. So what had happened is after the battle of Banu Al-Mustaliq, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was moving with the army and they had stopped at a certain place. And Aisha radiallahu anha was in this hawdaj. She was in the covering on top of the camel. They normally would remove that and put it aside for the women not knowing who was inside so that they could perhaps relieve themselves or they could perhaps take a little bit of a stroll, etc. As she was seated there, she realized that her necklace was missing. So that necklace that was missing, she went to look for it. And as she was looking for it, the army had got up. They lifted this hawdaj, they put it on the camel and they began to move, not realizing that she remained behind. When she found her necklace or when she realized that this army had now progressed leaving her, she sat put in her position. Until one companion came by, a beautiful man, he who was known for his dignity and his responsibility, truthfulness and trustworthiness. He was Safwan ibn al-Mu'attal radiallahu anhu. As he came by, he noticed this black cloth and he realized this is a female. He stopped and he realized also that this was Aisha radiallahu anha. With utmost respect, he offered her a lift back to Medina Munawwara. 
And as they had entered Medina Munawwara, the hypocrites were waiting because they knew that Aisha radiallahu anha was missing. And when they saw the two of them come together, although he was not on the top of the ride with her, he was actually holding the camel out of respect and walking with it. They spread a rumor that these two, astaghfirullah, I don't even want to say what they said, but they accused them of immorality. And this hurt the, fa the, the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The father was Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Afdalu man masha ala al-ardi ba'da al-anbiya. The best to tread the earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-Siddiq. And the person they were speaking about was known as As-Siddiqatu bint al-Siddiq radiallahu anha. The most truthful or the truthful, the daughter of the truthful. Subhanallah. She was Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What an, what an accusation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal revelation clarifying this immediately. And the reasons made mention by the ulama that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the people to fall into the categories that they would fall into. Just like what would happen in our society. There is a rumor before the clarification of it, there are some people who don't believe it. There are some people who believe it. There are some people who believe it and spread it. And they were those who created the rumor. These are all categories of people. So we need to ask ourselves, which category do we fall into whenever rumor is being spread? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in Surah An-Nur verse number 11, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُصْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ لَا تَحْسَبُوهُ شَرًّا لَكُمْ بَلْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ لِكُلِّ امْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَكْتَسَبَ مِنَ الْإِثْمِ وَالَّذِي تَوَلَّا كِبَرَهُ مِنْهُمْ لَهُ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah says indeed those who had come with this fabrication those who had fabricated against Aisha radiallahu anha, they are a part of you. Don't think that it was bad for you. In fact, it was good for you. Why does Allah say that? Don't think it was bad for you. It was good for you. Well, let me tell you the goodness when rumor spreads. Point number one. You know, a few days ago, I heard someone spread a rumor about me. So I told the brother who came with the tale, my brother, I don't want to know because I have so many sins. I need people like this so that they can carry my sins for me. Subhanallah. Because I learned it in the surah that it's not bad for you. It's good for you. You might struggle in this world for a short period of time. But wallahi, in the long term, you have only gain. Because if you've had sins you've committed by them spreading rumor about you, they will carry those sins. So don't we need people like those? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Let's not carry the burdens of others. And we should realize when someone spreads a rumor about you, there is goodness. Secondly, you get to know who is genuine and who is not. They say you have so many friends. They all smile at you. They all greet you. But the genuine ones, when there is a difficulty, you see who defends you behind your back and who doesn't. And this is why I say, if we want to improve the condition of the ummah, wallahi, one of the ways of doing it, I'm talking of the social community, meaning the social relationships that we have. One of the ways of doing it is to speak good about each other behind our backs. And I promise you, if we do that, and we promise that we will only say good about one another behind our backs, we cannot go wrong. Society will improve. Our relationships will improve. It will become worthwhile living in community and society because each one knows good about you. But today we have the opposite. You have 99% of goodness. Everyone only speaks about the 1% of bad that may be in a person. Let's change that, my beloved brothers and sisters. So Allah says, it was not bad for you. It was good for you. And we want you to know that every single person who participated in this rumor spreading and in this accusation will bear that portion of the sin. Proportionately, they will bear the sin. And the one who created the tale, tawalla kibrahu minhum, the one who had actually ignited that entire rumor and the entire accusation, he will bear a great punishment. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Now one might ask, you know, what should we do if this has happened? Like I said yesterday, we need to seek the forgiveness of Allah. 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is always hope. The doors of Tawbah are wide open. And we need to be bold enough to go to those whom we have wronged and seek their forgiveness. Don't let it just be a wholesale WhatsApp message. I do know that people send WhatsApp messages, but when you have really wronged someone, then you can do better than that. You can call them, you can visit them, you can see them and so on. You don't need to just send, if I have done anything wrong to you, then triple M. You know what triple M stands for? Make me maf. Have you heard that? If I have done anything wrong to you, then triple M. Subhanallah. That could mean anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. That means you don't even know if you've done something wrong. Yes, if you have not done something wrong, and according to you, you really have not hurt the person, then indeed you have every right to say, look, I haven't hurt you knowingly, but if there's something I've done unknowingly, please forgive me. That's fair. But if you know what you've done, two things you need to do. Seek forgiveness and go and unwind whatever you have wound in the past. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So Allah speaks to us regarding saving ourselves from this type of rumor by mentioning to us the response of a man like Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu an. In verse number 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكُمْ مُبِينٌ had the believers when they heard it, had you when you heard it, not uttered the following words, thinking good of yourself, that this is indeed a fabrication. What does that mean? You see the wife of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu an, she asked him, did you hear what the people are saying about Aisha radiallahu anha? Immediately he said, remain silent. Would you do that? She said, no, I wouldn't. Well, she is cleaner than you and higher. Subhanallah. Would you do that? No. So then she would definitely not do that. Imagine, bi anfusihim khayran. They thought goodness about themselves. If I can't do it, I'm sure she's cleaner than me. She's higher than me. She's better than me. She's closer to Allah than me. Then definitely it's out of a question. Hada ifkum mubin. They said, this is a clear cut fabrication. That was one category of people. Allah praised them in the Quran. But my brothers and sisters, we have a problem today. The problem is, if you ask someone, would you do it? I don't even want to say what the answer would be in today's community and society. And this is the reason why we think that others perpetrate crimes similar to us because we are guilty. That's the problem. We are guilty sometimes. You know, if you sit and you ask someone about a religious person, they would say, I wouldn't put it past him. And the reason is because you wouldn't put it past yourself as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. It's just reality. It's a fact check, my brothers and sisters. When we improve ourselves and we develop a link with Allah, you see another man, automatically you're going to think that he probably has a better link with Allah than you. So you think goodness of him. You see a man walking into a nightclub. The first thing that comes to your mind is, whoa. What is he doing? I had a feeling every time I saw his lips, he did look like he was on drugs. First thought that comes to your mind. And later on you find out, subhanallah, that that uncle must have gone in there to remove his son or his daughter or for some other reason. And then you say, nah, that was just an excuse. Even after you hear it, this type of thinking is very negative. It destroys society. My brothers and sisters, if you really want to help, don't think bad. Go up to him, say, uncle, I saw you in the club. Subhanallah. The uncle might say, well, what were you doing in the club to see me there? <laughs> so my beloved brothers and sisters, remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who accept this type of statement with their tongues, accept it with your tongue, meaning you heard it and you spoke about it immediately. And they thought it was light. They spoke about it. You hear it and then, you receive it and you give it and you think it's light. And Allah says in the eyes of Allah, it is very, very severe. Listen to the verse. Verse number 15. And remember when you 
received it with your tongues. And that means that when you actually got hold of it with your tongues, mentioned it with your mouths, this rumor, and you think it's something light, and in the eyes of Allah, it is something great. It's a huge crime. And th this is why we all know on the day of judgment, there will be the scales of justice. Allah says, and we have placed the scales of justice on the day of judgment. We shall be weighing absolutely everything. Nobody will be oppressed on that day. Even if it is a mustard seed's weight worth of a deed, it will be brought to the book. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no soul shall be oppressed even in the least. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease on that day. So there will be the scales of justice. So we are taught that the mercy of Allah dictates that if your good deeds are more than your bad deeds in weight, you will go to Jannah. How's that? How is that? Imagine you have the scale. One side tips the other. The side that tips the other side, if it is bad, the other side, it will be ignored. If it is good, the good is not ignored. That's the amazing mercy of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَن those whose right hand of the scale is heavier, those are the ones who are successful. You did more good deeds than bad. That is success. All of us seated here, all of us listening to this later, every one of us who will view this later, we all have sins. None of us can declare that we have no sin. But when your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, you have succeeded. This is why I keep on doing good deeds. A young man came to me telling me, I'm hooked on to pornography. What should I do? I really don't want to do this. It's dirty, but I find myself addicted. Every time I go back to it, I told him one of the ways you engage in istighfar, increase your good deeds because it's like a seesaw. The minute you increase your good, your adhkar are increased, your salah is increased, you are in wudu, you read the Quran, you are in good company, your bad will automatically decrease because it's like a seesaw. Remember this. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us about these scales, we have one major issue that we are unaware of sometimes. The weight of the deeds, we don't know. Or we take for granted. Why do I say this? Because do you know, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a very small statement, but very, very heavy. The heaviest statement on the scale. There is a hadith known as Hadith al bitaqa where a man would come on the day of judgment with 99 files filled with sin. Each file is from the east to the west, sins. And suddenly, as they are placed on the scales and justice is being served, one card will drop out of one of the files. And on that card, it would be written, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the angels to place that on the right side because this person had uttered it with complete conviction and belief one time in his life. Subhanallah. And when it is put on the other side of the scale, on the right side, 99 files on the left side, guess what will happen? It will tip the scale. Subhanallah. It will tip the scale. That's the power of the statement. But the level of sincerity differs from person to person. The level of sincerity differs from person to person. You never know what Allah loves. There are conditions upon which a person may be in that make it difficult to wear a scarf on the head, but they still do it against all odds. They are not equal in reward with that person who finds it so easy and still does it. When sin is in front of you and it is so easily committable and you still do not commit it, you deserve a feather in your cap. You deserve a bonus, an extra reward because there is another person who abstained from sin. It was not even present in front of him. 
There is a big difference, vast difference. When you want to do something wrong and then you say, Oh Allah, I fear you, I'm not going to do it. Oh, I love you, I'm not going to do it. Then you deserve a special status on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. So when we accuse people, Allah says, you think it's light, but it's actually very heavy. It actually can change the balance of the scale. This is what it is. I give you one more example. One day, one of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ commented about another one that she was a little bit too short. Now, this was in her absence. And you know, we say shorty. That's even a name. It's somebody's name also. Do you know that? And they don't mind. You say shorty. He says, yeah. You know, <laughs> subhanallah. We even call people fatty. Subhanallah. I have a cousin. We call him fatty. And he says, yo, bro. Subhanallah. That's how it works. But remember, if the person doesn't like that name, it is a crime. Do not call each other bad nicknames. You're allowed to call nicknames, but they need to be good and they need to be loved by the person whom you are calling using that name. So remember this, my brothers and sisters, when that wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uttered the statement, it was sorted out immediately. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wallahi, if you were or if what you said was in the form of ink, in a droplet, it would change the color of the ocean. And what was the statement? She's short. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Imagine how many oceans we would have changed in color. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So these verses are dedicated to us in order for us to be able to save ourselves from calamity and disaster in the dunya and the akhirah by protecting our tongues. How beautiful is this? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says quite clearly, Verse number 16, Allah says, And had you, when you heard this rumor, said that indeed this is a lie, it's not befitting for us to say such words, it is a lie. So sometimes people say dirty things. You should tell yourself, you know what? This is too dirty for me to talk about. You know, I once saw a person who was, mashallah, looking quite religious. And I heard them use a bad word. And I called them and I said, you know, my brother, this word doesn't suit your face. He said, what do you mean? I said, your face is so munawar. You know, your face looks so beautiful. It looks like it has some noor in it. And the way you are and the word you use, the two don't go together. And this is what happens with us. Dignity and self-respect is something that is called for when it comes to a Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. I want to end by making mention of something that happens to all of us. You know, nowadays we are living in the age of social media. I spoke yesterday about Photoshop and video shop, etc. We receive a message, right? Before we've authenticated it, it's forwarded already. We have a dirty clip. You know what's a dirty clip? It could be pornographic, triple X rated, double X rated, or just X rated. I hope you know what that means. And what we do is we laugh because it was just a joke. And we forward it to someone and they forward it to another person, not realizing it was so sinful because it had in it immorality. Don't spread it. The power of deleting. Develop the power of deleting a message that is immoral. And you will develop a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, I challenge you. When you see a bad message, a dirty message, do two things. The first thing, develop the power to delete. Without even thinking, delete. The second thing, you need a little bit more power to do the second thing. And that is, send a message to the sender to say, please don't send me such messages. Done. Done. If you're ready to do that, your link with Allah is polished up. You have saved yourself from great calamity and disaster. But you need to know this. My brothers and sisters, listen to the verse. People were spreading tales and they like to spread things. How this person committed adultery. You know what she did? She went here, she went there and he did this and he did that. And they got together at this place and they did this. And that one did this to this one. And all immoral stories, Allah says, it's not good enough. It's not the sign of a mu'min. 
Listen to the verse. Verse number 19 of Surah An-Nur. Those who love to spread immorality among the believing males, females, for them there will be a severe punishment in this world and the next. We just say, ah, oh, come on, I was only joking. Allah says, no, not about that. You joke, but there are limits to joking.